Hulu app, mobile smartwatch, instant messaging, video attending, social posting, Instagram junkie, YouTube following, office and email, inbox sorting, CRM, and organizing, marketing and shopping cart managing, credit card buying, Google searching, Amazon purchasing and e-commerce digital selling, gig working, and Reddit, Twitch, Discord, LinkedIn community, linking, following, internet, and cloud users. And in case I missed anyone, everyone else out there in internet land. If any of this digital stuff sounds like something you might do, today's world from here is about you. Hi, I'm Tim Basco, founder of Blockshirts Blockchain. And it's about you because if you're like me and the rest of us that connect daily one way or the other, as of now, if you want to connect to Twitter in the future, guess what? This guy says, you've got to be authenticated and pay eight bucks. Well, eight bucks for one authenticated app or say a B-cert token you can start with that has all of your internet, privacy, tools, data, and your entire future covered. Hmm. Anyway, let's talk about now. You are here, Web 2.0. And when we started this whole internet thing about 22 years ago, we started leaving a cluttered up mess. Bits and bytes of data strewn all over the web, stuff that wasn't only authenticated, it had no structure. And mom wouldn't have liked it. That didn't last long though. The green team decided to clean up after us and clean up they did. They took our data, they started building it, tracking it, picking it up every time we carelessly threw it on the side of the digital highway or into the data buckets created for us. These software tools that capture all of our data and they recycled it. Even if we didn't know who we were, they did. And what we were dropping behind us along the way they, the big tech, quickly cleaned up that for us. And just like mom used to, all of a sudden, things were rosy and perfect, and they were happy to. How green it's been, this big job of capturing and organizing and recycling using all of our data. Trillions of dollars of green have been created about you, your friends, me, finding you, tracking you, and those you know and interact with what you need, what you should know or see, whether you want to or not, the green data movement of Web 2.0 is a money-making machine. And if Web 1.0 was like a big landfill that had bits and pieces everywhere, that got a big digital cleanup from the heap. Web 2.0 was driven by the data recycling movement. Today, it's so efficient, not a single scrap of our data goes unnoticed or is wasted. AI does the work. Bots increasingly talk to us, right, Elon? The recycling and use of our data drives everything. And 20 plus years later, it's still not authenticated. That's where we started when we were building Bloxerts, long before Twitter's new chief decided and announced it was a good idea last week. Well, we agree. We knew it started by building authentication over seven years ago at Bloxerts. Our exposed data drives our credit scores, even if it's not accurate. It's scraped up by the billion dollar FICO companies who also break rules. But hey, that's another video story. Data delivers our identity, even if it's stolen, and they don't have a clue who we actually are nor do they care. Data drives what we can do from the capture of our purchasing power to buying our homes. It's based on the color shirt we like or what our credit cards say about us, even if we didn't make the charge or use the service when it goes to the credit agencies. Unless we work really hard to go backward and prove it wasn't us or prove that's not true, guess what? It's on our record data drives our friend groups and our video meetings. Now there are business how-to books out there about analyzing your data, our data, 
Since all sales went online during lockdowns, authors are openly revealing they were for the first time able to see how we do or do not make decisions to buy. From AI-driven data that is fed into the machine, quite interesting and very, very relevant really, some CEOs proudly are announcing at global conferences now how they're using your data to sell back to their customers that are using their software about you, but that's another upcoming story. So that's Web 2.0 in our digital walks daily. We spread data all over. But never fear, the green team is here to pick it up and use it for us, about us, and on us. Even the bad guys pick up after us when they can, when the big data guys leave the locks to the data store undone. Then they hold it hostage or grab it and run and pretend to be you. Through identity theft, we get back into this vicious circle. When it comes to work and to our finances, our data trail we've left behind decides who we are, how we can buy, what we qualify for on loans, for our business, for our work. There are even click-through agreements that we click agree to all the time that say, yes, you can use my data to control my engagement and life for your research information, support how you analyze me and my behavior to, well, I guess sell me more. Some tech companies are selling this package data back and they call it a genie, like putting all of your wishes and dreams in a bottle for the companies that use the tech so they can grant you ever more consumer or business wishes. And no, 80, 90% of the time, it's what you'll want to pay more for. The clutter of business software doing this for companies behind the scenes is very well organized and targeted to keep us paying and keep the ability of prying into our businesses and lives possible. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Welcome to the Hotel California. So we thought that Web 3.0 would change that with the promise of distributed, decentralized web with blockchains. Instead, what it was delivering was a free-for-all roller coaster of crypto that saw huge swings up and down and the facade of freedom that turned out to be more hype and hope than actual function we can use. That horse of cards all came crashing down this past summer and crypto winter returned. Behind all of this was an important evolution that's been emerging. It was the proof of possibility, the proof that we could do it differently. Web 3.0 showed the emergence that in finance, if nothing else, a lot of work and assembling with rethinking the web, we could use this change, this distributed ledger, this blockchain to control the flow of data against us and make it work for us. We could create a web that wasn't controlling us, but that we could control. The tech that was created from the beginning the blockchain and the AI technology emerging today could make each of us more in control than ever. Better, smarter with our lives, our businesses, our contracts, our money, and the daily way we use technology. It was a quiet movement. It didn't shout. It didn't emerge all at once. It took a lot of thinking, a lot of work, and millions of hours. Like anything of beauty, it had to materialize through effort. Now that's here, Web 4.0. So when you put your hand in to click, you stop the domino effect against you of all of this data and control and pricing of software. When you leave your comfort zone, you start again. You start here with Web 4.0. Search without being tracked. Meet without being spied on. Our recordings kept private for our use, not to be aggregated. People we have authenticated to attend our meetings, we know are secure. When we choose our tools, we know that the data and the software are something we control, not some big centralized tech company. That control only you and the permissions you know are behind those encrypted numbers of the blockchain. 
you hold the key to unlock that encryption, that vault of information, that green and gold of the future lies with each of you with the BCERT token that is software. Let's you hold the power, the keys to lock up what you wish, unlock when you want to, move freely with privacy and security and the tools you need to utilize without the fear of bots backtalking, algorithms watching as we're being tracked and utilized for more and more sales. We've been saying proof of authentication is the future. Now someone else is saying it's worth paying for its scale. Authentication is the proof and it will extend far beyond a single social media platform. It can be our control and privately held proven identity without us giving up our business and personal data any longer. In fact, that's what the push is and has been from Europe to California and other places around the globe with regulations of privacy, self-sovereign identity, and what we call trust, truth, and transparency. Whether you're a big bank or an individual, it's real, not a bot. It's not fake marketing. It's not a fake identity. The future is here for us now. The time is green for our personal goals, our ability to protect our privacy and our environment where we live for generations, our ability to benefit and earn from what we do, be rewarded from our work and data, our ability to value our work and tokenize that with something meaningful like BCERT tokens instead of others profiting off of that work we do. It's green with our social goals and our personal and financial goals, creating our proof of authentication every time we click and confirm that our private and public keys are creating authenticated transactions. So we don't need to burn any more energy to create that authentication, create the rewards that we deserve from our data, our work we do every day. It's a net zero in the environment. It's infinite possibilities. It's the future for the next generation on this planet, the next internet beyond the cloud and into the metaverse. So hello, next internet users. Today, it's called Bloxert's Web 4.0. Tomorrow, everyone will call it their own internet. Now you are here. Just click, download Orbit Eye, and get started and join us. Tomorrow.